Sir William Seo. Thank you very much. I've never heard so much rubbish than from what I've heard from that particular member there. For five years, that government there have sat on their hands, have made things difficult for New Zealanders in trying to get a home. He asked the question that I'm going to pose to the minister. Minister, what is the price of an affordable home under your government? Is somebody who is on the on a median income of 20,000, individual median income 20,000, uh, will they be able to afford a house uh, to be built under, based on this particular bill? With a family of a combined household medium income of 40,000, the likes that we have in Manukau City, will they be able to afford an income under the house that, uh, under the bill that you have here? Minister, those are the questions which rightfully you should be answering. Uh, and I, I hope you do. I hope you do take a call, Minister, to answer that. Because that is particularly important. No, that's exactly what we had over there. So it's a rhetorical question. But oh, rhetorical. No, no. No, no. Mr. Chairman. No, to, no, no, to bring you into the debate. The member objected when, when he got a response similar over here. There will be other calls. Sir William Seo. Can the Minister guarantee that someone earning $20,000 medium uh, in Manukau, will they be able to buy an affordable house under this bill? Can the Minister guarantee that a household on a medium income of 40000 will they be able to afford a house uh, based on... And how many will be able to buy a house based on this particular bill? Sir, for five years, they did nothing. And all of a sudden, because when Labour started announcing our policy that we would address the problem, that we would build 100,000 houses over 10 years, that we would provide and we started talking to the industry to ensure that the price would be affordable. All of a sudden, in this budget, they came up with this particular bill. And the shame of it, sir, they didn't even have the decency to talk to Auckland Council. Order, that Auckland order, Council was surprised. Order, would that member please leave, get properly dressed? Sorry. Sir William C. Uh, didn't even have the decency, sir, to negotiate in good faith and to give the Auckland Council a heads up that the introduction of this bill was a surprise, guaranteeing powers by this government to simply override local councils and the ability to make decisions on behalf of their particular communities. Sir, there is a housing crisis in New Zealand. There's a housing crisis because there's a shortage of rental property. The quality of the rental property in the private sector is appalling in some instances. Uh, and there is a housing crisis because it's becoming very, very difficult for first-time homeowners to get into a home. And so if we come to an agreement that there is a housing crisis, sir, then we should also be prepared for that side, be prepared to accept some of the... Uh, the sage advice that people like Marion Street, Annie King are offering that particular minister. Because I think, sir, that unless this government recognises that that is a real problem, then they're not going to be able to solve it. Sir, look at the bill. Look at what we have in this bill. Clause 9, clause 4. The purpose of the Act is to enhance housing affordability. Enhance housing affordability. All it offers up is to facilitating an increase of land and housing supply. Sir, that doesn't guarantee. Well, if the, if, if the minister is so uh, confident that this is going to guarantee, then I would like for him to state so, that, by, that he can guarantee there will be more people into houses. When I ask affordable houses, I asked the minister the other day, recognising that in the community that I represent, um, the medium income is 20000 for individual and 40000 for a household. I asked him, was there any consideration given to what income levels a first-time homeowner should be earning in order for them to be eligible for a mortgage to buy one of his uh, so-called affordable houses? Here's the answer. The accord is about increasing supply of homes. 
it does not determine the criteria for eligibility for a mortgage. This is an issue for the banks. That's right. And so, guess what, folks? The banks have turned around and made it really, really difficult. Under their watch, have now made it extremely difficult for the 70% of New Zealanders who don't own their own home. So, sir, Mr. Speaker. Sir William Sear. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You are a wonderful speaker. Um, I, I want to point also, sir, the reason why I, it's important to highlight the medium income uh, for individuals and the 40,000 medium income for households is if you look at clause uh, 9, uh, the reference to the minister, it, it, it talks about, clause 9 talks about the government that before, making a for, before the Minister makes a recommendation to insert the name of a regional district in Schedule 1, the Minister in determining whether a regional district experiencing significant housing supply and affordability issues in 3, uh, then A1, the weekly mortgage payment on a medium price house as a percentage of the medium weekly take on pay for individual exceeds 50%. Well, sir, um, I put to this house that... Uh, a medium income, individual income of 20,000. Uh, and when you consider the current prices, the current prices at the moment in Mangere of 300,000, I think of last week, houses which were normally 300,000 will go in for 500,000 or 700,000. And this is no BS, Minister. Um, and it also says, based on a 20% deposit, may I ask the Minister how his bill guarantees that somebody on 20,000 medium income is going to be able to uh, raise 20% deposit on a house that's either 300,000, 500,000 or 700,000. Those are the kinds of prices, Minister, in the South Auckland region. And, and I had to say, sir, that given the context from which this bill springs from, I don't have confidence that this bill addresses affordability issues. I don't have confidence in all that's simply enabling greater supply if you're not going to also attack um, the issues around those who speculate on houses, uh, the issues around those who bring in foreign capital and are speculating on houses, unless the Minister is prepared to address that and include that particular package in this bill, sir, I can tell you now, nobody in South Auckland believes that this bill guarantees those who want to own their own home a first-time homeowner. Nobody in South Auckland believes when the Minister says that this is going to provide a certain number, thousands of houses, believes that they will be able to get a house simply because under your watch the banks have made it virtually impossible for many of the workers to raise 20,000, 20% 20 uh, as a deposit. So, sir, unless you, you're going to provide much more than simply saying the supply of land and the supply of houses is going to uh, uh, ensure that there's affordability of houses. So I can tell you now that that is just um, pie in the sky. Pie in the sky. Pie in the sky, sir. And, and I think that, uh, that you've really, it's an appalling, it's appalling po poli political uh, bad kind of politics where you have raised this issue just because your polling would have showed that the rest of New Zealand, the rest of Auckland were captivated by the policy that we in Labour announced, the need to build 100,000 houses to address the housing supply, the need to address the way that uh, price houses have been inflated by speculators and, and the need to try and move that kind of um, um, investment into more productive investment and the need to be able to stop overseas uh, uh, speculators coming in and inflating the houses of prices. How on earth can somebody earning 20,000 median income uh, be able to get a 20% deposit on a $300,000 house? There is no answer. And so, sir, I rest my case that despite what the rhetoric, despite their spin around this particular bill, this bill is not going to provide affordable housing. This is spin to try and interfere with the captivation that the rest of New Zealand, uh, when my colleague here 
Phil Twyford stands up and talks about uh, 100,000 houses and the need to build more houses, uh, the need to reduce the prices, the need to be able to exempt uh, first-time homeowners from the loan-to-ratio value that the banks have now imposed. That's what is needed, sir. That's the kind of leadership that's needed. That's the kind of leadership, sir, that we need as a country if we're going to address the issue of having ensuring that people who want to own their own home are able to get into a home. Uh, Paul Foster Bell. I move that the question be now put. Eugenie Sage. Thank you, Mr. Chair.